Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining our webinar today at two o'clock in Dublin and in the UK and 9 a.m. on the East Coast. We'll just give it a few more minutes to let people come in and get settled. Hope you're all having a good day. If you want to say hi to us, you can just use the chat function. It'd be great to hear where you are today in the world. Hope the sun is shining for you. Is it shining there? It's shining in Dublin, yeah. How about where you are, John? It's always shining in Dublin. Yeah. Uh, we've got partial sun and partial cloud, but I it's know. probably probably a good thing. It was uh, it was a bit of a killer last week, when, or the week before, when the weather was lovely and having to work inside. So. I know, it was tough, but... Uh, here now. So people coming in, that's great. I'll just say hi in the chat. So uh, everyone joining, thank you very much for making the time today. We'll just give it one more minute, let people, uh, let people jump on. I'm sure people are hopping from one Zoom or Teams or Skype call to another at the moment. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's just a new way of working, isn't it, Joe? Um, uh, indeed, and I was going to say, in terms of um, all this constant shifting and adapting, um, for any of those that um, thought they were attending a slightly different webinar, we did change the name on Friday, so you are attending the right webinar. Uh, we're all adjusting and, and moving quickly through uh, different states. We just thought that this was maybe a little bit snappier. Yeah, indeed. Good rebrand. <laughs> in great content, just a better title. You're absolutely right, yeah. Great, so we'll give it one more minute and we'll, we'll get started. Nice to see some, some friendly and familiar faces joining the session today. Hola, Maria. I won't, I won't uh, attempt to speak Spanish on this call. <laughs> I thought you'd been spending all your time learning and improving your Spanish, haven't you, Stephen? No, I've been playing a lot of FIFA 20. Is that <laughs> a, a... <laughs> well, in Spanish mode, though, right? In Spanish mode, yes. So, yeah, I'm picking up, picking up some terms. <laughs> Goal! Go. Exactly. Universal. Great. We'll just do 30 more seconds. People, well, people can catch up as they, as they join anyway. But really appreciate you all uh, taking the time. So why don't we, we go ahead and get started. So um, really great to have you all on the call today. I'm Stephen Walsh, co-founder of Anders Pink and delighted to be doing this webinar with Joe Hill Wilson, um, our, our great partners, LearnAmp. So how are you today, Joe? Doing all right? Brilliant, thanks, Stephen. Really good to be here. And um, yeah, really, really looking forward to kind of taking everyone through this webinar today. Yeah, uh, just to introduce myself, I suppose, very quickly. Um, so I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at LearnAmp. Um, I'm also one of the founding members of the business um, and uh, yeah, my background's very much in kind of learning development roles and, and, uh, and really looking forward to taking you through what we want to talk, take you through today. Me too, Joe. That's great. And just a few quick housekeeping bits and pieces just while people are joining. So we're going to try and keep this to 30 minutes, 35 minutes max. If you want to ask questions at any time, you can either just type them into the chat or into the Q&A functionality. They both work pretty much the same. Um, so just use those features uh, that should be down at the bottom of your screen. We are recording the session today. Um, uh, so you will get a link to the recording pretty quickly after the session as well. And if you want to follow up with either of us after the call, we'll, we'll share our contact details as well. So that's all there is to it. You're, you're, all, on, you're all on mute, but uh, do, do keep chatting to us. And we'll answer questions. We'll have some time at the end for Q&A, but any questions that come to mind, just stick them in and we'll try and pick them up as we go. Um, thanks so much, guys. And we also have um, a set of colleagues. So Michelle uh, from Anders Pink and Matt and uh, Sue from LearnAmp are all monitoring the chat as well. So feel free to drop in any technical questions or any questions that you want and we'll do, we'll do our best to pick them up as we go. So um, I'll hand over to you, Joe. Please kick us off. Looking forward to it. Great. Thanks very much. Well, look, guys, thanks so much for making the time. We know that there's many other Zoom sessions and remote um, workspaces you could be in today. Uh, so really appreciate you joining us. So the, the focus of the session today is um, all around how can we help making remote work work better um, and why employee experience and particularly digital employee experience is really critical at this point and how continuous learning plays a huge part in that. So I'm going to kick off on the LearnAmp side. So what is this whole digital employee experience and why is it so important? It's a big part of how we frame our value to companies. 
Um, and just to give you a couple of stats to start off with. So employee experience, if you look at LinkedIn and you look at the amount of people who reference employee experience as being a key part of their role, back in May 2017, there were only 838 people on LinkedIn who had any kind of reference to employee experience in their title. Fast forward six months and a 48% growth meant that there were then 1,244 people who referenced it um, in their profile as well. Going forward to today, we now find um, nearly 6,000 people who've got it just in their title and over 3 million people who now reference it within their profile. So employee experience is massively on the rise. I think the, the, the times that we find ourselves in now particularly and really thinking about the, the changed experience for our employees, uh, it's really, really crucial to think about that and how that's having an impact on performance, uh, on morale um, and on your business overall as well. So when looking at employee experience, what are the things that really kind of impact and, and matter? So, you know, employee experience, if we agree that that's our HR's new frontier, the three main areas that I like to focus on um, is around purpose. Do people understand the vision of the business, particularly in the times we find ourselves in? We're all having to reimagine ourselves. We're all having to refocus our propositions and our businesses. Do, does everybody know what's expected of them? So clarity around kind of purpose and vision um, and alignment is really key. The technology that everybody uses, I mean, I think we've all probably signed up to quite a few different services recently. Trying to make sense of that is really, really important and trying to make sure that that feels um, kind of uh, unique and it feels um, intuitive to each business, I think it's really, really important as well. So what are the tools you're using? How does that make sense to your business and how are they all working together in an aligned way um, for your, for your um, employees kind of experience? And then the last part is environment. And environment is generally crucial um, in relation to obviously the physical environment, the office space. And as that's had to change, the digital environment is becoming more and more paramount. Um, in its importance. So then looking about um, employee experience in general, uh, you guys might or might not have come across this concept before, but of employee lifetime value. Now we all probably understand customer lifetime value. So we understand things like cost, cost of uh, customer acquisition. We understand the importance of really clear customer journeys. We understand the importance of customer lifetime value and keeping your customers for as long as possible and keeping them engaged and, and engaging with the products that you sell. We at Learnout don't think that's any different when it comes to um, employees. And when looking at this particular slide, I know there's quite a lot going on, but I'll try and run through it with you. You can see in that first section here um, that the first stage of this is really around the attraction part of their journey. So when thinking about um, the first impact you make on an employee, it is actually before they even join. Now our platform doesn't necessarily help with all of the aspects of recruitment and onboarding, but we do think it's a really crucial phase. How are you engaging with your employees in a digital sense from the moment that they start to, to become an employee of yours? So can you do pre-onboarding? What other tools are you using? How are you using video? How are you connecting with people, even in this time where you can't meet face to face, maybe using Zoom or other types of um, kind of programs in order to be able to interact with your staff during the recruitment phase and also before they join their first day. A stat just to throw out at you, 78% um, of people apparently make up the decision if they're going to stay in a business within the first 48 hours. And that's uh, never been more, more important than those people that might be joining you through this phase as well. It'd be so easy to forget about them. You can't even physically see them sitting in a corner um, twiddling their thumbs now. So how are you making sure that you're engaging with them and that they've got all the support, they've got all the resources they need in order to be successful. So our platform, and I'll show you some examples of this later in the call, um, are really helping you to design the ideal onboarding journey and to be able to hit all of those major milestones so that people can get up that learning curve as quickly as possible. They can feel as part of the business um, as much as possible. And that's going to really um, impact on engaging them and helping them to, to kind of become a net contributor um, rather than a, and a cost center, which is what this red line is showing at the bottom. After that, a really, really crucial part for us is there are lots of LMSs out there that might help with aspects of that. But for us, it's all about the journification after that. So how are you using a platform like ours to be able to engage with people on a regular basis? So having kind of daily check-ins on pulse surveys, having weekly digital check-ins, 
um, being able to set and align on objectives and key results. So having that continuous conversation both around performance and also around development. And if you can do that, you're going to have a much, much better chance of being able to engage with people, keep them developed and hopefully keep on that upward trajectory, both in terms of uh, performance and also in terms of tenure. So what you're seeing at the bottom here is what we often see in a lot of businesses where, where you don't manage that and make that work well. People often leave within the first six months, even if they don't have a bad experience necessarily. If you don't keep on developing on the second line, what you often see is that people, they might get up to an expected level of performance, but after a while, if they're not engaged, if they don't feel that they're still developing, they are going to leave. And actually, interesting, if you, if you look at tenure rates in the UK at the moment, people in their maybe their 40s, their 50s, they aren't necessarily leaving businesses any quicker. But if you're looking at um, Generation Y and Generation Z, they are leaving much, much sooner. They're leaving within 18 months, two years of joining. So if you spend all this effort, as you're seeing here, to get them up to that level, all you're doing is investing in them almost. You want them to stay for as long as possible so that they really start to pay back on that investment. And this um, blue curve and this red curve is showing you the difference between a failed journey and a really, really good journey that's going to keep people in the business. So that's a little bit about us and why we're different on that. So we talk a lot about employee lifetime value. We say that it's the hidden KPI for most businesses. And um, thinking about that now is more important than it's ever been. So how can you improve your employee lifetime value, which leads to um, higher lifetime value? How can you then make sure that improved employee experience drives better customer experience, again, crucial at this point as well. How are you kind of um, differentiating from your competitors around experience particularly? And then how does that drive the better business results? Employee experience, the man that knows everything about this is a man called Jacob Morgan. If you don't know about him, have a look at his book, which is all around the competitive advantage of employee experience. So if you don't trust me, trust him, go and get his book. And he talks about the three areas that are really, really crucial being cultural experience, technological experience, and physical space. And again, I'll just reiterate, as we've lost that physical space, everything from an experiential point of view is being channeled digitally at the moment through to your employees. So have you got the right technology in place? What's important in terms of making sure that technology really works for your people? And isn't it an enjoyable experience as well? So, you know, I'm going to hand over to Stephen now, but what we're going to talk today isn't just about the crucial stuff you have to get done, but also making sure that it's a really enjoyable experience for your employees as well. So last thing for me to say actually is on the left hand side, just a bit of fun, which is to say, I'm sure you've probably all seen this, but what's the biggest contributor at the moment to um, your change in digital transformation? <laughs> that maybe not your CEO, maybe not your CTO, but another C that we all have unfortunately become very accustomed to. So the things that are really changing at the moment, people having to adjust to a new normal. So how can you support that with them through training, through content? People are having to learn new skills overnight. You know, we all had to adjust really quickly. How are you supporting that process? Change management, both in people's heads, their mentality, the skills. How are you managing that process? A lack of social interaction we see a really driving a ma massive need for content at the moment, where people don't have the same interaction with their, their staff, their colleagues that they used to do. Content is taking over in a big way. So videos, stuff you create internally, but then also massively getting the best kind of content that's out there and delivering that to your, to your learners as well. Obviously a thirst for information, but, but really crucially, a thirst for the right kind of information. There's lots of misinformation out there at the moment. There's lots of overload of information. I think um, Stephen's gonna to touch on that as well. And some businesses, you know, unfortunately they're not as busy as they once were as well during this period. And they are also having to furlough staff. So thing that we're really supporting a lot of businesses with at the moment is how can you use this period as an, a business, as an opportunity to be able to kind of catapult yourself when you come out of this into being absolutely head of the game. And a big, big thing on that is how you're helping your, your business, your employees to be able to upskill, to manage the challenges they're currently going through, but also to be able to manage the challenges of the new dawn once we come through this, this really kind of important phase in all of our lives as well. So a little bit of context there for you, and I'm going to hand over to Stephen. Thanks so much, Joe. Really, really interesting. I just love the way you guys think and talk about employee lifetime value. And I think you're right. Now more than ever, we need to think about how do we help people to stay connected, keep developing, 
adjust their skill sets to be ready for you know what we're calling this this new normal even though it feels like any, anything but um and uh, and ensure that they're they're on that upward upward journey all, all the way through i think it's incredibly important for all of us and, and i want to kind of keep keep that conversation going and look at it through a specific lens which i think complements everything you've just said which is about helping people to continuously learn so you know many of us and i know many of you on the call today are in hr or learning roles or, or connect with others in the business who do I think a key part of everything that you've just said about building that value in employees um, over their lifetime is about helping them to continue to learn and continue continue to develop every day now more than ever. And that's not easy. You know, let's be realistic about that. It can be hard to build a continuous learning culture. A couple of the challenges that we face, and we're probably feeling these very heavily at the moment, is time and budget pressure. So if you're trying to help people develop um, their skills, continue to learn, that normally means pressure on HR learning teams to create content or um, build content for them, whether that's sourced from libraries or from, from wherever it might be. That costs money, that takes time, and those things are kind of against us at the moment more, more, than, more than ever. There's a stat on the right there from LinkedIn, and it's kind of a paradox stat, which is you know 94% of people saying, I would stay longer if I felt my company was investing in me. So you know those drop-offs that you saw that when people, when people leave, but at the same time, employees saying, I feel held back from learning because I just don't have time. I just don't have time for it. I want us to think differently about time for learning as, as, as we think about today, because it doesn't always have to be a course or an episodic experience. And I think as we are now all working and learning remotely, we can think differently about this. We can reinvent what learning means on a day-to-day on -day basis for us. But we do face challenges around helping to, to, to fuel this. But it's something I think we need to address if you want to move us on there, Joe. Um, and, and it's because employees tell us this, you know, this, this is a couple of surveys from Towards Maturity and IDC with just picking out some key stats. You know, the, the majority of learners, 60% say, I learn more from external sources, from content around the web, be that from, you know, LinkedIn or from Twitter or from blogs that I like. I learn more from those than I do from courses. And I find web sources essential or very useful, far more than I find digital learning or e-learning courses useful. But and we all know this, you know, it takes time. It takes time to find it. And Joe, you said it exactly right earlier. It's not just about content, it's about quality. And it's about making sure we're getting relevant, good, trusted content. And that feeling has a name. You know, Mark Schaefer calls it content shock. You know, this idea of, you know, think back to you use the phrase thirst for information. Sometimes it can feel like we're trying to drink from a fire hose when we go on to yeah. LinkedIn or Twitter or where, wherever it is. We're overwhelmed with content and you know, there's more out there that we can ever hope to read or listen or listen to. And we shouldn't try because it's, it's bad for us. There's lots of data out there about you know, content being overwhelming for us, particularly with a lot of the news at the moment. But it also there's another name for it. If you've ever done this, just Google a term like sales tips or at the moment remote working. Uh, you know, you'll probably get 100 million results. Good luck finding the best content if it's beyond the first page. <laughs> Clay Shirky has a great phrase for this. and He's a great writer. Really encourage you. Along with reading about Jacob Morgan, he's written some great stuff about echo chambers and dealing with content. And he says, while this feels like information overload, it's actually a better phrase for it is filter failure. We're just letting too much of the wrong stuff come at us. And that's where we need to, for ourselves, but also for our teams, our employees and learners and organizations, help them get on top of, of content and, and, and organize it effectively for them. Because it's what people want. If we go on and have a look at, um, this is a survey done by Jane Hart, where she asks employees directly what do you value what do you what do you get value from in terms of learning experiences in your organization and there's some interesting patterns here and uh, if we think back to employee lifetime value joe it's interesting to think about how these map to to the value that we deliver into the organized into yeah, the organization employees learning on the job of course is going to be the best experience you have in terms of developing yourself but the cluster around the top here you know lot knowledge sharing your team the web networks web resources all rank really, really highly. People say these are essential or really important. Down at the bottom end of the list, classroom training, conferences, e-learning. And that's not to say we shouldn't do these things, but it's to say, I think we all need to think about where is the balance in terms of the time and effort that we put in and the budget that we put into helping people to continuously develop. Let's make sure we get this balance right. And let's make sure we're giving people more of what they want, particularly at the moment when uh, you know, people need to stay up to date. They need to feel connected to their teams using apps like, like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, whatever it might be. Let's make sure we're putting useful content in there. Um, and that's where content curation, I think, comes into it. And without getting you know, overly academic about it, there's lots of definitions out there. Really simply, and I like Rahit McGarver's definition there, it's about finding content, 
keeping organized, keeping it up to date. Three steps to remember for content curation, seek, sense, share. So these are from Harold Jarkey, who talks a lot about knowledge management and curation. I think just three simple steps if you wanna do something practical today, tomorrow, to help your teams continue to learn and stay connected at the moment, think about these three steps. And we'll just, just take a moment to look at each of these. So seeking is all about finding the right content for the right people. So as with any audience, with any learning intervention, you wanna figure out who is it I'm trying to support. Now right now, of course, that's everybody across the organization, but their needs are gonna be different. Your sales teams are gonna need different content from your leadership team, from your technical teams, from your client facing teams. Think about what they need and talk to them. Be what's sometimes called a content concierge, if you think of that. Um, you know, hotel metaphor of I will go and get the right content for you and bring it wherever you want it to at exactly this moment. Talk to your teams, ask them, what is it you want? Do you want updated information on what's happening in our markets, what's happening to our clients, what's happening with our competitors, whatever it might be, and where do you want to get that content from? So back to that idea of content shock is you don't need a thousand pieces of content rapidly updating every hour. That's overwhelming. You need just really good quality, filtered, controlled, curated content. And then, and we're going to come on, Joe's going to show you a couple of tools, ours, ours and LearnAmps working together about this is you don't need to do this manually. You don't need to go out to the web and start browsing. That's where you will get that content shop and get overwhelmed. Use tools to do it for you. Once you've got that content, once you've done your seeking, it's then time to think about making sense of it. So obviously that means reading it, listening to it, watching it, whatever it might be, and then reflecting on it and, and big fan of working out loud in this regard. If you see something and you think it's useful and it would help someone else, Add a comment, and that might be just a simple one line, saw this, thought it was useful, I learned something from this, I think you will too, whatever you want to say about it, and then put it in the right place, you know, help, help to build knowledge over time. I think one of those great things that helps employees to, to stay and build their value is the connections that they make in an organization. So building that collective knowledge and a culture where you expect people to share things and, and contribute. And so then rounding that out, once you've made sense of something, you want to share it. You want to put it in the right place. And, you know, let's learn from our friends in marketing here. Go where the eyeballs are. Make it easy for people to find content. And of course, that should be in your LMS or your LXP, but it can be in lots of other places as well. If, if, you, if you're an organization that uses Slack or Teams, and, and both of those have seen huge growth in the past, uh, past month or so, make sure the content is coming in there as well. Make, make sure it's in the right place for people. Don't copy and paste. You don't have time to do that. Let APIs and smart integrations take care of the sharing for you, the way they put it in for you. And then it's that human thing. And we're all probably trying to build new habits, whether it's doing Joe Wicks in the morning or learning a new language. Take this time to build a continuous learning habit. If you spend 10 minutes a day checking in with three new pieces of content, that's a week's worth of learning over a year. So invest in yourself and help to build uh, your team's lifetime value, their lifetime learning value, if I can attempt a phrase at, at the moment by, by continuously learning. So that's just you know, a couple of views from us about how you can do this. Really important, I think, is to look at the tools that can help us do that. So I'll hand back to you, Joe, and we'll, we'll, we'll go through that. Brilliant. Well, look, so interesting. Thanks for that, Stephen. And we could not agree more at LearnAmp as well. I mean, we continuously are seeing at the moment L&D departments struggling to be able to produce the amount of content at the rate that people are having to consume it or, or wanting to be able to, to kind of consume it. So agile learning is another phrase that we've been talking a lot about at the moment. Agile curation is, is really, really key. And that becomes a real burden, I think, for a lot of people who are trying to be kind of responsible for delivering this as well. So help yourselves out, have the right tools, do things at scale, um, use things like, um, like Anders Pink that really, really do help um, to intelligently find the content that's going to really drive value for you. So yeah, couldn't agree more. So let's show you a little bit of what this is all about. Um, so I am just going to go and share my screen and then you can start to see a little bit of what Learn Amp and Anders Pink looks like. So. Um, this is and um, this is LearnAmp. Um, just to give a little bit of context before we jump into the Anders Pink integration itself. So one of the things that Stephen was talking about there is, you know, it's great having content and everyone's sharing content, but a you can have misinformation where too many people are sharing, and also things are being shared on all of these different sites. So how are you being able to harvest the best stuff and then store that in a place that you can then shape that? into something that's really meaningful for people and also that new starters are coming in or people that want to revisit content can find that in a, in a really well structured and meaningful way. So in LearnAmp, you can absolutely do that by starting to shape this content into uh, pathways is what we call them. You can also shape them into modules. 
Um, and these pathways, sorry, these learning objects and, um, and modules can be shaped into learning pathways. You can even have them locked, which means that people have to go through them in, in a certain order if you want to. So for the more structured things like leadership programs, induction, where actually it's really difficult at the moment maybe to be able to manage that learning journey because you're not physically with people. Being able to have a self-serve model, but being able to check in you can add in assessments and checkpoints to make sure that people are actually learning what they need to, they're understanding it, they're being able to demonstrate the learning outcome and how they've improved as a result of that. So that's just to give a little bit of context in terms of where that content might sit. Um, then what you've got is, um, we've got a series of integrations, so we integrate with tools like Slack as well, so that if you are pushing content from Anders Pink into some of these channels, if people are then also sharing other content that they're finding themselves or being shared with via WhatsApp or whatever um, kind of method they're having that content shared, you can harvest that content and start to pull it back into LearnAmp. So again, you can make that available to your kind of wider population as well. But crucially, with content controls to make sure that the quality and the consistency of the stuff that's being sent out is really important. You can see our great friends here, Anders Pink. So as you go into Anders Pink, you can see that you can actually build um, what Anders Pink called briefings, which are these um, very, very controlled searches of the internet. So, you know, one of the things we always talk about is the Google test. People always say, well, why is it not better than Google? If you could have a filter over Google that goes to your best sources or go to your best um, Twitter followers and go and extract that information in an automated way that really helps to, to kind of curate and pull things together in one place, you would definitely use it, right? So that's why Anders Pink, uh, in a nutshell for us, is so great. Um, so what you can see here is these are actual briefings that Anders Pink have helped us and also their customers to start to create. So you can see it's not just all about the important stuff, maybe compliance or learning. There's things like top tips of how to, um, you know, kind of get the best from Netflix at the moment, the best books to read. We want to keep this fun. We want to be really engaging as well. But just to show you how you might start going into actually creating these. So if I just go into a briefing that's already been curated, essentially what Anders Pink allows you to be able to do and, and what we've kind of uniquely integrated with them is to be able to build that in our interface so that you can start to build these searches and these searches you can start to add in topic areas you can include certain keywords you can exclude certain words you can even have influencers from twitter which you can start to pull their content in you can decide if you only want to show from those influencers if you want to include those influencers as part of the overall search you can include certain domains, you can exclude certain domains, you can include RSS feeds, you can exclude RSS feeds. Um, Anders Pink have done a lot of the hard work for you in that they've created 6,000 business domains, which they know are the best um, resources out there to be able to search from. So you can absolutely um, curate directly from them or you can untick that and you can start to curate just from specific domains that maybe are really relevant to your sector um, or to your company as well. So just to go back, I'm going to show you a couple of other examples very quickly. So here you can see there are ones around agile and virtual teams. Uh, we've got stuff around building resilience um, in exceptional circumstances. Tips potentially for the parents out there in terms of homeschooling whilst working from home. How to have collaborative and effective virtual meetings. I think we probably all struggled through Zoom meetings or Zoom pub quizzes with family members um, on Friday evenings. You know, how are we doing this effectively and how are we adapting? Plus, news on coronavirus, COVID-19 from reliable sources. So all of these things are being able to be pulled directly into our platform. We then basically bring them into what we call pending items. And I've just brought up the briefing related to agile, remote and virtual teams. And what it does is it pulls down content every 24 hours. You can force an import whenever you want though. And it's done all the hard work for you. It's pulled in those great sources. At any point you can go in, you can start to approve or reject these. And as you approve or reject these, within Anders Pink, what that can do is it can start to train your briefing as well. So it uses machine learning to intelligently train your briefing. So it uses really clever AI. It then starts to make those searches more and more intelligent, understanding what you like, what you don't like within each specific briefing. In our system, then you can also start to um, approve and reject you can start to select certain things that you like the look of, or you can select all of them if you want to. And then at scale, you can use our batch actions to add that into categories, 
which means that different user groups can see different categories. So you're starting to uh, provide content directly to their category that they can see in our library. You can start to approve it and add it straight into a learn list, which is our modules or into a channel, which is basically what we refer to as pathways. So really, really super easy to start getting that content into the platform. If I then went into one of these items, you can then start to benefit from all of the tools that we've got within LearnAmp to then start to decide how you might start wanting to distribute that. So you could share that and you can decide that you either want to share it with certain individuals and you can add a message and let them know. They then receive that as a notification in our system and an email outside the system that pulls them back into that specific item. You can also um, send that to particular teams or a, um, a kind of a high team, um, high level, like a like C-suite level management, and then all of the sub teams that go underneath that. Or you can decide that it's really important stuff you want to share with the whole business. You can task it which means essentially that you're setting it as a timed assignment. Uh, and within that, you can then start to, again, add messages. You can decide who you're assigning this to. Um, you can get very specific and you can even make it mandatory. You can decide if you want certain people like managers to follow up that people have actually done the things that you've sent out. Um, and you can do lots of nice things where you can even have it that it sets up for any new joiners joining the business as well. Any current um, people, you can have it run on cycles etc etc so lots of the lms functionality learning management system uh, sorry to use acronyms and learner experience functionality all in one platform here or you can simply add it into a learn list a channel or a category that people already follow as well and then just last thing i wanted to show you is once you've got this great content in you then have the ability to then start at a company level start seeing how are people act actually interacting so what trending items are you seeing people look at most? What are they completing most? What are they highest rating most? What content are people looking at most by tags? Because everything is tagged by content types, articles, videos, courses, and also by suppliers as well. And you can even start to see things like, are they using this on their desktop, their tablet, and their mobile? So probably enough from me. Hopefully that gives you a really nice steer in terms of how our two systems work together. And um, just going back to the actual uh, presentation side of things as well, I just wanted to let you know of one more thing here, which is we have actually um, teamed up with the Anders Pink team as well to just offer a few more things to you guys today. And um, so I might just hand over to Stephen to go through these two slides quickly. Yeah, I'll do that really quick. Thanks so much for that Je Je really thorough um, tool. And it's just great to see that whole seek send share um models just built so seamlessly into the platform that you guys have done so really really proud of the work we've done together on that i'll i'll, I'll say you know all of this functionality around Editors pink that's all native within within LearnAmp. so you get complete control uh, over the topics as joe just showed you there ai powered so it gets better over time the more you interact with it and keeps on updating um so that you don't have to go back out looking for new content around the web and as joe showed you can then share it comment it um, and do whatever you want to with the content once it's once it's inside LearnApp. So really delighted to have our, our partnership. Um, just one feature to mention that we have is, you, uh, as Joe just showed you there, you can create a briefing on any topic that you want to from scratch, absolutely anything. But you can also get access to um, briefings that we've already made for you as well. So we've created a series of bundles. and There's about uh, 120 of those across, as you can see, top, key topics there that we've seen patterns of across organizations, so leadership, HR, personal development, the new one that we just made working in the new normal. So you saw some of those briefings in, in Joe's list there as well. So those are all help you just to get started with a great baseline, which you can then change and edit any way you want to. So delighted to in include those uh, as well. Great. And, and one more thing I'd say from our side, one of the things that I love your, your seek, share and, and kind of methodology, and, and we talk about the three I's as well. So we talk about improve, inform and inspire. And those are really key things around kind of the types of content categories you might think about. Yes. And we often think that kind of e-learning, the stuff that you might spend a lot of time creating, is potentially more about the foundational learning sometimes. But Anders Pink is absolutely brilliant for keeping people informed and about inspiring as well as improving as well, don't get me wrong. So I would just think about that as well. It's, it's all about topical 
informative, fresh content that's coming through. So last thing I suppose for us to talk about is that we've got a special offer for everybody um, on this webinar as well. So um, if um, you know, we're wanting to help businesses as much as possible, and um, we understand that everybody's having to adapt to the new normal. So uh, for those businesses that are looking for new technology, would potentially be interested in our um, our kind of joint um, integration and, and services. We're offering 15% off both of our fees. So that's Learnout and Anders Pink for the first 12 months. Um, we are having to put a time limit on it just because um, we can't kind of offer this indefinitely. Um, but we're hoping that, you know, from what we've seen, lots of people are looking um, for new technology to help them as well. So if you sign up by April 30th, there's a 15% discount on both of our systems. And please just quote the code at the bottom, AMP AP20. So that's, that's it from me. Um, that might be it from Stephen as well. I'll hand back over. Stephen, thanks so much for the time today uh, and the airwaves. Thank you so much to the, all the listeners out there as well. Really appreciate you taking the time and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate you going over. We did have a few questions come in. Uh, we might have 30 seconds maybe just to grab a couple of them. I'm conscious of people's time. But Joe, okay. Joe one that's come through the uh, practical question, how long does it take to get set up? So if someone wants to get right. set up. Great question. I mean, I always say that's kind of like how long's a piece of string. It slightly depends on what your objectives are, if I'm being honest. But we we've got businesses. You know, I'll, sh I'll share as an example. There's a call centre that we recently worked with. who have got 850 staff. We got them set up within seven days, um, and that was to get them set up with content um, that we work with third parties, so more e-learning content and um, content providers like Anders Pink, um, and also in terms of our system. So absolutely, you can get you set up really quickly and and add a lot of value um, and then after that we can start to build on that and build on that and build on that. Sounds great and then I'll, I'll, one final question then we'll let people go what kind of customers do you see benefiting from these types of tools so I guess is there any particular sector or size or? Yeah I mean I think it works for all you know we work with banking companies like Metro Bank massively in terms of keeping on top of you know compliance trends um, things that are going on in the industry that they want to keep abreast of but every business has got the same kind of needs at the moment right we're all having to adapt to new technologies we're all having to learn about what's going on uh, in the world at the moment we're all having to kind of keep upskilling all of the main things and, and all of the new skills so i don't think it is uh, sector or, or company specific and um, so no hopefully um, we can drive value for, for anyone who might be out there needing us sounds great and we, we, we would echo that as well we see all sides all sorts of organizations all kinds of sizes benefiting from from content curation so so I think in, uh, just give people some of their time back. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Really enjoyed chatting with you, and, and thank you for your thank you for your engagement with this today. Do keep an eye out for that for that offer. Um, we're delighted to support uh, support LearnAmp and, and and offer that discount. And uh, thanks so much for joining today. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Have, Have a great, great day. day.